The Holy Ghost. You know, but one thing about it, the Bible says when it was finished, when he looked up and he said it's finished, he said, I gave up the ghost. He said when his words come out, the Holy Ghost come out of him and went back up into heaven. But one thing we don't think about was when he died. You know, the ghost went up. But one thing about it, brother, what Paul's day on in me and you is the Holy Ghost. You know, brother, and it comes with power. And without that power, it wouldn't be no life in me and you. You know, I'm going to do something. The Lord told me to do it when I was sitting back there, and I got to obey him. He told me to tell you to look to your left. Look, somebody looks to somebody to the side of you and say, Sisters, brother, I love you. But one thing about it, I come and I got to have church. You know, brother, without church, it wouldn't be nothing but an empty building. Brother, but that church is not inside me. Four walls, but it lives down inside me and you, brother. If we want to have church, we got to be on fire for God. I'm going to go into the scripture that the Lord gave me in Jeremiah chapter 13, verse 7 and 8. Here's what he told me He said, Blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord who's in whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters and that spreadeth out her roots by the river and shall not see when the heat come. But her leaves shall be green and shall be careful in years of drought. Neither shall cease from young and fruit. But here's what the Lord showed me when I was coming over here. I didn't get to study on it. I had to obey God. We were sitting in the parking lot and my wife asked me said, you got anything? I said, all I've got is a scripture the Lord gave me. We went to another store. I walked out. She said, what was the scripture? I sat there for a minute and I said, I don't remember. Brother, here's what it was. At first, when the scripture come to me, I was trying to obey myself. Yeah. But glory to God, when I got to the other one and the Lord hit me with a scripture, brother, here's what he told me. He said, if you go out and you plant a tree and you plant it in the in the sand, it's going to wilder up. The leaves are going to die. If you go out and you water that tree and burn ground, glory to God, it's going to sprout up. You know, brothers, that's me and you tonight. If we're watered by the Spirit, glory to God, we're going to sprout up. We're going to have fruit that we can eat. And here's what the Lord showed me. He said, if you go out and you plant an apple tree, Tree. Glory to God, you're going to look for that tree to produce apples. That one day you can go out, you can pick an apple, go home, you can cut it open and pour salt on it. I don't know about you, but I like salt. Yeah, on things I eat. But you know what? It gives it a little more flavor. But here's what the Lord showed me. He said, if you like salt on your food, get down and pray and get a hold of him and he'll salt your food. Food. He'll give it a little more flavor. Brother, I've been in church before. I thought I was right. I found out I wasn't. You know what? The Lord showed me some things. He said, if you want to get closer to me, he said to call out to me. If you want to get closer, call me. If you want to get closer, talk to me. You know, brother, I've got a mom and dad tonight. I love them. But you know what? If I want to get closer to them, i got to go to their house, to where they live. You know, brother, that's the same way with me and you tonight. If we want to get closer to God, we got to go to where he lives. We got to get closer and call out to him. You know, brother, I don't have this going to go just to make God for me. But you know what? There was a scripture in here. I'm going to obey God for a living. You know, brother, I was talking about the apple and the apple tree. You know, I think I might have preached on this a little while, a little bit when I was here the last time. I'm not sure. Brother, I touched on some things this morning at work or at church. 
We have this little thing we call tag team preaching. One to get up, preach for a little while, then the other to get up. You know, brother, you say people sometimes see that and they say, you know what? You've got together before church. You've figured out what you want to preach. You get up. You get it all together. Try to go and tell people that oh, the God had come down in it. But here's what I tell you, brother. If you're in one mind, one accord, glory to God, the Holy Ghost will show up. You know what? Because he loves his people. You know what? I was standing the other day at work. Glory to God. I've been blessed that I work with a bunch of preachers. I looked around the curtain where they was working at. And I just stopped. And I said, you know what? Right there. Here's what they did. They turned around and looked at me. And I said, the Lord said that my people know my voice. And a stranger, they will not follow. I looked at them. I said, if the boss hollers, you'll go to him. Glory to God. But if a stranger out here on the streets comes up to you and hollers at you, most of the time, we'll just walk off. Yeah. You know, brother, if we want a blessing from God, we got to call out to him. If we want God in our lives, we got to call out yeah. to him. Wonderful. You know, yeah. I was, I'm just obeying God. I know I might be getting off this little bit, but I think he's trying to tweak it to It'll come in together here in a minute. Bless you, Lord. You, Lord. you know what? We come in this morning tonight. And she asked us about the scripture where Jesus wept. Yeah. You know, everybody knows the story about Lazarus. Yeah. He died. They done put him in the tomb and he started stinking. Mm -hmm. But Jesus got the word that all this was going on that he was sick and his brother was dying. You know, he could have left right then and went to him. But it took him a few more days before he could finally go because the work he was doing wasn't done. Yeah, he was. You know, brother, when he finally got to where Lazarus was in the tomb, the Bible says it. He went to walk up to him and he told him, he said, roll the rock away. Open the tomb up. You know what she yeah. said to him when he said that? She said, huh? But Lord, you don't know he's been dead. He's starting to stink. You know, my brother, what did the Lord do? The Bible said, as she read it, he wept. You know, brother, you said, why did the Lord let me wept? Because Lazarus was something dear to his heart. Yeah. He knew, you know, what he was. You know, brother, and when he died, it hurt him. But what did he do when he looked in? He said, Lazarus, come forth. You know, brother, here's what I'm getting at. I preach on me tonight. Is that okay? One time I was laughter. I was in that tomb. I was thinking. I was dead. I was dead in the nostrils. You know, brother, the Bible said that we stunk in the nostrils of God. But one thing about it, when he looked out in Lazarus, Lazarus jumped forward and what had he bailed? Let him go. You know, that's the same way when me and you, we was once dead. But when Jesus called out our name, Glory to God, we were no longer dead, but we were alive. The weights that had us no longer had us bound, but glory to God, they was lifted off each and every one of us. Yeah, you know, brother, I want to tell you this right here. I want to show you something that the Lord used an animal in the Bible to represent me and you. Yeah, uh, Back in the Bible, there was the castles. They had the stones built up to where the enemy could come in. They had a place in there that would come down. They would ride up on it. The horses, the chariots, the camels would go in. Yeah, well, I touched a little bit on this this morning. But they would go out and they would do what they need to do. And they would take the camels with them and they would ride them. And the Bible said that when it got night time and they had to come back, if they didn't get back to where they was needing to go inside there to the safety, you know what? Before that gate come up, they was in trouble. You know, but they would come in at night time sometimes. They would have the camel weighed down with all the luggage on top of it. You know, brother, and they come up to this one area. There was a scripture in the Bible that it says easier for a camel to go through an eye of a needle than it is the rich man to make it to heaven. 
here's what I want to get at. When they would come back in at night time and the gate was up, there was a little hole cut out about that high on the right side of it. And what they would have to do, that camel would come up there to that gate. They could go in the main gate. They had that little hole that they was going to have to go in. And here's the point right here. They couldn't get in with all the stuff that the camel was carrying. So what they would have to do, they would have to take and then look at the, back the package off the camel's back to get the weight on it. But one more thing they had to do when they did that, they would have to get the camel to lay down. Anybody knows anything about camel knows that they can't get them hardly to lay down. But they would have to get that camel down on its belly to crawl through that little hole. You know, brother, I was praying the other day at the house. I've seen the camel plenty of times, but the Lord showed me some different things about it. He said, that's like you. I said, what do you mean? That's like me. That's the way I talk to the Lord. He said, you're like that camel trying to go through that hole. You can't make it if you got a lot of baggage on your back. You can't make it if you got a lot of straws on your back waiting it down. He said, if you're like the camel, you got to give it to your master to let him get them all so you can get down and crawl through that hole. Brother, they trusted in the masters that had the camel to take the weight off so they can get down and squeeze through that little hole. That's the same way with me and you. We got to trust in our master to take the weights, the sins off our backs that we can go through that little needle to get closer to him. Come, brother, if we got weight on us, we can't do it without the Lord taking it off of us. We can't do it on our own. I know, because I've tried. I tried to take yeah, what of me boy. that I had, but they wasn't no way of doing it. Hey, you know, brother, I'm not going to lie to you tonight. There's a lot. I'm standing up behind the pulpit. I'm not going to lie about it. There was times in my life that I stuck in the nostrils of God. Yeah, we all have. There was times in my life I was out here chasing the beers. There was times I was out here chasing the drugs. Brother, there was a time in my life when I was 18 year old, I couldn't do it without drugs coming into my system. I would lay there in bed, I would be so high, I would have to take medicine to come down to go to sleep. But when I got up the next morning, before my feet hit the floor, I had to have something to lift me up. You know what? I went like that for years, and I called out to God one day, here's somebody, I'm going to be honest with you, didn't understand it, and didn't believe it. But one thing about it, one day I got tired of the weight that was on my shoulders, and I can remember it to this day when I got up and I knelt down to God. I said, God, if you're real, help me. Here's a simple prayer that I did that day. I said, I'm God. I'm not much, but what I am, I give it to you. And I was sitting down in a little building like this, maybe five people in there. But when I got down, I prayed to him. I felt somebody come up, tap me on the shoulder. Brother, let me tell you what happened. I got down there that day and I prayed. I was squatted down like this right here. Didn't know how to pray. Yeah. But I said, Lord, what I am, I'm not much, but I'll give it to you. Yeah. And I remember now, and he said, we got to come to him as humble as a little child. Mm -hmm. But brother, I prayed that, that prayer that day, and I felt something tap me on the shoulder. Here was a young, dumb, stupid kid. I'm being honest with you. I turned around, and I said, what do you want? I turned around, and I looked again. There wasn't nobody there. I turned back around, and I went, sorry, trying to say it again. I said, Lord, I said, I'm not much, but what I am, I give it to you. And I felt a tap on my shoulder again. I turned around that second time, and I looked, and there wasn't nobody there again. I went to turn around, got ready to do it the third time, and there was a voice coming in my ears, said, you not feel me touch you? I said, Lord, I said, was that you? That's the way I spoke to him. And he told me, he said, yeah, I was. He said, now get up and go on what you got to do. That's what he said to me. Brother, and when I walked out that door, I'm not going to lie to you. Here was an old druggie that was on the eight ball day. Couldn't do it without it. Brother, I didn't think 
ain't nothing about it. I got up, walked out of that church that day. The day went by. Two days went by. Three days went by. Brother, it was almost a month went by. And I stopped dead in my tracks one day at work. And I heard something. You know what he told me? He said, brother, that's what he said to me. He said, we're well, that druggie that come down at that order. We're that old druggie that people said would never amount to nothing. Brother, I stopped right then. I said, Lord, you took it from me. I don't need it no more. Brother, here's what I tell you. I didn't have to go to no AA. I didn't have to go to no rehab. You say, brother, what do you do? I went to the one that gave his life for me and you where we can live. I normally don't tell stories about my past. Yes, you know, we've all got a past we're not happy about. Amen. I know I have. To, I've done things in my life I really regret. But I was talking to the Lord here the other day. I'm not going to lie, the devil jumped on my shoulders. Bless him, Lord. He tried to pipe with me. He said, remember the things you used to do in your past? For a minute there, yeah, I'll listen to it. I said, yeah, I get up every morning hurting places. I shouldn't be hurting my age. I said, yeah, I remember it. He said, remember when you were doing all that and you wouldn't feel no pain? Said, yeah, I remember it. Just bear with me for a second. We can just say. He said, don't you miss it? Right there is when the Lord stepped in. Yeah. And spoke to me. He said, that's enough. You know, I may talk to the Lord a little bit different than most people. I said, Lord, what do you mean that's enough? He said, tell him. I sat there for a minute, brother. I said, well, I heard places I shouldn't. I remember doing the drugs and I didn't feel it no more. And the Lord said, tell me again. He said, tell him. Brother, here's what I told him. I said, devil, you might have to use that stuff for the pain to not be there no more. You might have had to go and take me to a route that I was stranded. But here's what the Lord done for me. Brother, I can stay tonight. Let the Lord touch me from it. He give me a pain pill that don't give me sick no more. He give me a pain pill that I don't have to get up in the morning and be sick. You say, what is it? It's the power of the Holy Ghost that comes down in you that will make a new body down in me. Amen. At one time we was dead to the power. Yeah. yeah. We was dead. I want you to remember this scripture right here. Blessing Lord. She sung that old song about the church house being empty. Yeah. Brother, I've been in some churches. I've been in some churches where the church is almost full. Yeah. Two, three, four, five, six hundred people in there. But I'll tell you right now, I would be in the church, I'd rather be in a church with five people with the Holy Ghost moving. Amen. Be in a service with a thousand people is dead in the door now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You say, why is that? Just think the offering they're taking up. Yeah. Just think all the things they can do. I said, yeah, they can. But let me tell you what my God said. They said, what's that? I said, we're two or three are gathered together in my name. He said, there I am in the midst. Yeah. Yeah. You know what, brother? <clears throat> you know, in the son of the scripture, he told me to tell you, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or a seed of vacant for me. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. I'll tell you this. How many two people were just obeying God? How many people went to their cabinets at their house for cabinets almost being empty? I have how many's got in a car and wonder if they're gonna have enough gas to make it to the gas station? Yeah. I've been the same way. We I'm not when I say any of this, I'm not saying it's bit bright and lift me up, I'm lifting the Lord up. Yeah. yeah, bless the Lord. Went out there one day to pay the land taxes. <laughs> walked up there and I just asked him this last year or last January. I walked up to him and I asked him, I said, I just wondered how much my land taxes was. And they told me, I said, okay, I'll go get the money. I'll be back a little bit. There was a guy back behind me. He kind of peeked around the corner and he said, do what? How much were they? And I was told him. He said, here, let me pay that for you. 
I said, brother, I got it at the house. Let me go get it. Here's what he told me. He said, don't let me lose my blessing. We went one day out here to eat. Went to pay for a check. And the woman told us somebody done got the bill for it. Mm -hmm. Another time, we had to pay some money into income tax because they didn't take enough money out. I believe it was more than $250. We went and paid the two hundred fifty dollars, and we went to get her light bill out of, out of the mailbox. We opened the light bill up and it said zero on it. I told my wife, I said they got me a mistake on this, but poor loud don't do that. But on the top of it, they was credited up there for two hundred fifty dollars. The same that we just sent in to pay her taxes, or uh, the same that we just sent in was the same as on top of that, brother. People are trying to tell us that God can't move anymore. It doesn't come too late, and I know he can. Yeah, much. People have said God's dead. You know, brother, uh, I'll tell you what. He might be dead to them, but he's not dead to me. Uh, yeah, brother, I'll tell you one yeah. thing. Uh, when sickness has got us bound, and we're in the hospital, uh, and we're on our last breath, uh, and all we can say uh, is, Lord, touch me. And, brother, uh, when God can come down uh, yeah, in the midst of a hospital yeah. and touch me and you uh, and lift a new creature. Brother, we're a blessed body. All we got to do is reach up to him. He told me one time, he said, if you'll reach up, I'll reach down. Yeah. Brother, Amen. all we got to do is reach yeah. out to him. Yeah. Yeah. People ask me sometimes, say, brother, why you preach so hard? What well, you do? I was sitting at church the other day. I started preaching it. I don't know why I done it. The Lord told me to walk up to the front bench and stand on top of it. I stood up on top of the front bench and started preaching. And when I got down, I kind of felt crazy there for a minute. I said, Lord, do I really do it? And the Lord smacked me in the back of the head, sitting right there, sitting my foot hit the floor, and I said that. Yeah. He said, remember when I told you in the, in the scriptures, obedience is better than sacrifice. Yeah. But he said, make yourself a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto him. Here's what the Lord told me. He said, if you be obedient to him, the rest will follow behind you. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Well, we might be strange sometimes, but the Bible calls us strange. Yeah. Amen. You know, I didn't have much. I just wanted to obey God for a minute. Bless him, Lord. Yeah. But you know, Lazarus, There was a lot of times in the Bible that God, that God used people that was unworthy to be used. Doubt and Thomas yeah, bless you, Lord. had doubts all through, all through the whole time. There was a time when Jesus was in the tomb. He, he rose from the dead. And he went back to meet all of them. Doubt and Thomas was in there. <laughs> and he told them, he said, unless I can put my hands in the holes of his hands and into his side. I'll not believe. You know, there was one more thing when Jesus was on the, on the cross that we don't realize. The Bible said they plucked his beard out and they beat him beyond recognition. Yeah. But when he went back up to heaven, the Bible says we'll be known as we're known. Yeah. Amen. He left the natural form of this earth and gave the heavenly form. Yeah. And when he came back down to visit them, he told them, he said, Doubt Thomas said, unless I put my hands in his hose, I won't believe. And Jesus walked up to him. He didn't recognize who he was. He said, Thomas, fill the hose. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He said, Thomas, fill a hole in my side. You know, brother, here's what I'm going to get at. I'm going to go back to this right here for a minute. Why well, say more? Even though we've got pains on our shoulders, sometimes the weight of the world seems like it's on our shoulders. Yeah. Brother, hang on. Because one day, it's all going to be gone. Yes. I touched on one thing at church today, and I done something for them. I said, if you take, you turn off all these lights in here, there's a gross darkness in the building. Yeah. You can't see nothing. That's right. Mm -hmm. Gross darkness. Mm -hmm. That's the way we was without the Lord. But one thing about it, when you flip on the lights, there's light in here. Amen. Yeah. That's yeah. the same way with the yeah. world. You know, he said he was the light of the world. Mm -hmm. He said, now that I'm going, you're, you're to be the light of the world. Yeah. Here's where I'm getting at. 
the gross darkness is gone. The lights come down into every one of us. It's time for our lights to shine. Amen. To this lost it's world true. out there, let them yes. see that He still yes. is the light. Yeah. You know, I'm gonna let Him come back up here. That's all I have tonight.